and then dialogue um, hosted by the thematic working group on rural youth employment uh, of the Global Donor Platform for Rural Development. Um, it's an honor for me uh, to, be, to be here today with you all. Uh, my name is Federica and I work as a technical analyst on youth and uh, social inclusion at IFAT, uh, the International Fund for Agricultural Development, and I will be the moderator uh, for this dialogue today. Um, let me give you a short background about this uh, working group in uh, rural youth employment that work with, uh, was created within the, the framework of the Global Donor Platform for Rural Development in 2018. Uh, the group's uh, main focus is on knowledge exchange, uh, partnership building and engagement in relevant policy processes uh, such like this one uh, through a collaborative actions of member institutions and all uh, relevant stakeholders. Um, and this is really in line with the objective of this meeting and this discussion with you all today and what we would like to, to achieve and, uh, and how we want to contribute to the food system uh, summit processes. So we really want to use this opportunity uh, to discuss with you um, um, represent, youth representatives from, from the African continent, from all around the world, donors, development practitioners, public and private sector representatives about your idea, your experiences and your positions when it comes to um, specific challenges and more importantly, share best practices on how African youth can become drivers for decent job creations in sustainable food systems that we indeed uh, chose as the title for this, uh, for this dialogue. Um, at today's session, uh, we will start by hearing from experienced and inspiring speakers uh, discussing on promoting full and productive employment and decent youth employment and the key role that youth um, uh, play as the key main drivers in this uh, process. But what is uh, really important to note already here is that this day is not about the conveners or the speakers that you will hear from now, but it's really about you and your role to discuss, to brainstorm and to think about the key dimensions of youth empowerment within the framework of sustainable and transformative food systems. And these dimensions will be further discussed during the breakout uh, groups that we will have uh, in the second session of this uh, dialogue and this mainly about youth agency, youth capacity and skills for inclusion in food system, but also about the opportunities and the constraints linked to promoting better jobs for youth and how to link them to respond, but also to take full advantages of local and regional food demands. Uh, some of you might have worked discussing this topic your own life, and for some, uh, discussing these issues is new. Um, we have participants attending from all over the world, and our objective today will be really to value your experience and your active contribution on these topics um, that uh, will be discussed, because every day each of us is interacting with the food uh, through the systems in uh, one way or another, and we must all be part of the transformations that make them sustainable and inclusive. Uh, so the dialogue start today um, uh, in plenary, uh, where we will hear from a range of speakers with a lot of knowledge and expertise on food systems. Um, uh, during the opening sessions, our speaker will really set the scene by providing technical background and information on rural youth em employment and also in the context of the event. Um, uh, we will then have a keynote remarks from African youth, from um, um, a colleague from the African Union uh, Commission, and also focal points leading the United Nations Food Summit System uh, process. This is followed by um, a short presentation of two um, game-changing propositions uh, that we also provide the basis for the following discussions in the breakout groups. 
then in about um, uh, one hour time, we'll, um, we'll send you into the, um, the breakout groups uh, where in smaller teams, you will have the opportunity uh, to discuss uh, round four teams that I already mentioned about youth agency, capacity and skills, uh, but also the potential for youth in local food systems and now to create more and decent jobs. Um, we also have an amazing, an amazing team of uh, facilitators and note takers uh, with us from partner institutions such as I am going to TV. Um, please be happy to allow and unmute. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much. Um, so as I was saying, we will also have an amazing team of co-facilitators and note takers uh, besides um, uh, other organizations that will directly intervene in the, in the plenary, uh, such as ILO and OECD, that will make you work and assure that everyone feels comfortable and is given the opportunity to speak. Uh, before ending today's session, uh, we will come back here in plenary and report back from the group discussions and have a short, really short Q&A sessions and interaction with you all, but you really need to take advantage of the breakout um, groups uh, where it's there the opportunity to discuss and brainstorm um, and uh, in fact i also encourage you to share your comments and your questions and also contributing uh, with your experiences and perspective as we go along in the chat uh, and also keep some burning questions that you have or contributions for the q a at the end uh, please note that also the opening session, as well as uh, the wrapping up at the end, is uh, recorded, uh, but the breakout groups will not be recorded, so you can share your ideas and opinions in a more freely way. Uh, please also note the netiquette. Uh, for uh, this virtual uh, event, and I also encourage you um, uh, to include uh, um, in brackets uh, uh, close to your name, also your organization, um, uh, so that it will be easier for the facilitators um, uh, to, to, to facilitate the discussions. Uh, but now it's time for me to introduce you to our opening speakers, uh, Peter Wobbs and Sven Braulich. Um, Peter is uh, the senior economist and leader of the Decent Rural Employment Team at FAO um, uh, and is working in the Inclusive Rural Transformation and Gender Equality uh, Division and he will be one of the co-chair of, uh, and he's actually, sorry, one of the co-chair of the working group on uh, rural youth employment. He will set the scene for our discussion, providing some uh, background on this uh, uh, topic, uh, Decent Employment for Youth but also the key challenges and opportunity the youth face as an heterogeneous group. So Peter, please, the screen is yours. Thank you, Federica, and uh, a warm welcome from the thematic working group on rural youth employment of the Global Donor Platform, especially to all of you, the youth connected from African countries. The future of agri-food systems and rural development on the continent depends on you the young generation. Today, 20% of the world's rural youth live in Africa, and this share is expected to almost double to 37% by mid-century. Over 60% of Africa's population is under 24 years old, 75 is under 35. That leaves one quarter of the entire African population being older than 35 years. Being young and living in rural areas often bears a double challenge, namely the constraints all rural people face, such as weak infrastructure and poor working conditions, but also age-specific vulnerabilities. For example, the majority of workers in Africa uh, work in the informal sector, but this is the case for 90% of young people in many African countries. 90% in the informal sector. Furthermore, youth are overrepresented among the poor and 70% of youth in Sub-Saharan Africa are considered working poor. They usually earn low wages, are employed as casual or seasonal workers, and often face unsafe and exploitive working conditions without any legal employment arrangement. 
These decent work deficits are particularly common for youth in rural areas, and they have further exacerbated through the COVID-19 pandemic. Additional challenges, including uh, the limited access to natural resources, finance, technology, knowledge, and information, but also insufficient participation in policy dialogues and other decision-making processes. And often rural young women face even more pronounced challenges, such as land ownership restrictions, limited mobility, and of course the triple work burden that clusters them in low value activities. In addition, young women's participation in policymaking in rural organizations is still low as a result of social norms, low literacy levels, and also the lack of confidence to defend their interests. Agriculture is the biggest employer in sub-Saharan African countries, engaging about 60% of the 15 to 34 years cohort. And the agri-food systems have potential to create more decent jobs for youth, both as entrepreneurs as well as wage workers, on and off farm. Hence, the sector must play a central role in the structural transformation of African economies, including associated job creation and the subsequent related impact on poverty reduction. For this to happen, the right mix of policies on the one hand and private public investment on the other hand have to support agriculture and local value chain development to foster farm and non-farm employment creation for youth while contributing to enhanced food security. Agriculture and rural development policies must recognize the contribution of young people to agri-food systems and address their multiple needs while embedding decent work and gender equity principles, reducing exposure to hazards and risks such as child labor or gender-based violence. The inclusion of young people in the agri-food systems transformation is key to introduce greener and more sustainable practices. Ultimately, this will foster a just transition towards vital rural areas and unlock the untapped potential of the new generation. However, we need to better account for the heterogeneity of youth, their diverse educational attainment and their various aspirations. Equipping young people with the necessary skills and resources is crucial for them to leverage economic opportunities and to realize their potential as agents of change for a sustainable food systems transformation. Last but not least, we need to make the voices of the rural youth heard during this food systems transformation process. And extra effort should be made to also include marginalized and particularly vulnerable youth, such as young migrants and refugees, indigenous youth, young people with disabilities and others. So I look forward to today's discussion and listen to your ideas on how to boost youth agency, how to strengthen youth capacities and skills, how to unpack opportunities for youth in the local food systems, and how to promote more and better jobs for rural youth in general. Thank you very much. And back to Federica. Thank you very much, Peter, uh, for this very interesting um, opening remark uh, that really uh, brought us through the main challenges, but also opportunities uh, for young people in the in the food system. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, the youth engagement is really fundamental, not just owing to the sites of the current demographic cohort of youth, uh, but also the strong influence that they have in the development trajectory and also the, the future sustainability of food systems. So thank you very much for pointing out these important uh, dimensions. So now I um, introduce you to uh, Sven, um, uh, who is uh, uh, working uh, with GSZ um, uh, in a global project in relation to rural youth employment, and is also the co-chair of the technical working group. And uh, he was uh, one of the main leaders in the organization of this, uh, of this dialogue. Um, 
and uh, it will provide that uh, it will also bring us through um, the processes linked to the food system summit and uh, some information on the context about this dialogue and also uh, how we will contribute to the food summit system. So the screen is yours, Sven. Thank you, Federica. And a very warm welcome to all of you to this food systems uh, dialogue. I would like to briefly touch on two points. Why did we organize this dialogue and how will it contribute to the Food Systems Summit? The Food Systems Summit is set out to be very participatory, aiming to capture and include the diverse voices of all stakeholders. And there are different pathways to contribute and one is through various dialogue events. As you might be aware, there are different dialogue formats. So far, there are 1,000 dialogues, more than 1,000 dialogues listed on the Food Systems Summit website, with more than 650 being independent dialogues. And that's the most open and flexible format. But screening through the announced dialogues, only around a dozen focus on youth and food systems. And this relatively low number does not do justice to the high importance, as we just heard from Peter and the number of young people who are and will be um, seeking to earn their livelihoods in agriculture or food systems in the wider sense. This is why we, as thematic working group on rural youth employment of the Global Donor Platform, decided to organize today's event. One of our aims is to bring all relevant actors together to foster exchange and to coordinate action, including, of course, in the most important process that aims at transforming food systems and reaching the SDGs by 2030. Now, how will the results of today's dialogue contribute to the Food Systems Summit? Looking at the uh, summit journey, we see that under each action track, um, around 20 game changers propositions have been selected out of several hundred ideas that were submitted so far. These ideas have now been clustered and are currently being further refined. For today, we choose to take a closer look at the two game changers that do put young people at its core and will form the basis um, for our discussion. They were selected under action track one and four and will provide a very concrete link to the Food System Summit for the contributions and feedback gathered today. We are happy to have the contributors of the ideas with us to present them and also facilitate our discussion. While, of course, the official feedback will be provided to the Food System Summit, this also provides the opportunity to form networks with interested participants to further engage and take action. Now, I'm looking forward to the keynote inputs and pitches on the Game Changer Solutions, as well as to exciting and fruitful discussions in the breakout sessions. With this, back to you, Federica. Thank you very much Sven, for providing us with this additional information also about how this contribution will be uh, used and the follow up uh, on, this, uh, on this independent dialogue. Uh, so thanks again. Um, so now as I stated at the, the beginning uh, and also as mentioned by, by Sven, we really want uh, this uh, dialogue to be participatory and include a very um, inclusive um, range of participants and bring above all uh, youth into the table and listen and hear uh, their voices. So I'm very um, happy uh, to introduce you to our next um, uh, speaker who sent us a very inspiring uh, video. Uh, her name is uh, Lindsay uh, Kachila uh, Jere um, from the Network for Youth Development in, uh, in Malawi. Um, and uh, her view also will be on how the game changers uh, for you in uh, in the food system um, will be uh, will be used and how this will contribute to it. So, as I was saying, she has prepared a very inspiring video message. So, I ask my colleague uh, to launch the video with us. Okay. 
population growth as 60% of the population are young people who at the moment are experiencing a lot of challenges, including lack of employment, early and forced marriages, drug and substance abuse, just to mention a few. It is a known fact that youth in Africa are not interested in agriculture because farming is labor intensive. It is a cumbersome process. It takes time to harvest and it is also synonymous with, with others, especially those in remote areas. In addition to this, there are few young people that can be used as role models to encourage other young people to join farming. I believe that all is not lost only if countries can consider coming up with clear strategies that will identify solutions to the current trends. The strategies must consider different perspectives, one of which is the youth general conditions, available opportunities for the youth and perception of agriculture among the youth. The strategy should not be a one size fits all, but to be contextualized on country per country basis. It is important to hear the voices of the youth themselves in terms of what they want to happen if they are to be involved in the agriculture sector. One of the things that will make agriculture attractive to the youth is the access to structured, to structured markets. These markets these markets must offer competitive prices so that youth can easily get income. Consider removing international trade barriers on agriculture produce, especially for those that are coming from young people. This may entice young people because instead of selling their produce at the international market, they will also be expecting that at least one day that may, uh, they may travel to other countries in their region, even Europe, to sell their product. This can be a game changer. It will be a game changer if we mechanize the agriculture sector using hose is labor intensive and not popular to the youth. If there will be an opportunity for facilities such as tractors and other technologies that shall attract the youth. Naturally, youth would like to own or acquire items and having access to these assets will encourage them to be involved in the agriculture sector even the more. It is also important to provide some opportunities to support the youth who have decided to venture into agriculture, some soft loans that will enable them to support their livelihoods. This way, the youth cannot abandon their farms and go into the city to search for extra income so that they can support their daily needs. The youth need money and they cannot spend a month in a month without searching for money. To access loans in bank is a nightmare for the youth. So creating a window for those that are in farming with a soft loan to support their needs will be a game changer. Just like farm subsidies that are provided to women, there is, there is a need to make a provision of farm input subsidies for the youth who are into serious farming. This will encourage more youth uh, to join science farm inputs in Africa are quite expensive. There could be more solutions, but for the interest of time, if given an opportunity, I like uh, to share more and to also discuss with other young people in Malawi so that you can appreciate the struggle that is associated with farming. And I thank you all for your attention. We also thank you uh, very much, um, uh, Lindsay, uh, for, uh, for this very inspiring um, uh, contribution. And indeed, I um, mean, I want to underline that we really need to show to avoid generalization and uh, one size fits all uh, solutions and instead recognize that the locally, socially, and cultural specific um, con context dependent meaning and the significance of youth and really elaborate on the multiple ways in which young people are implicated in food systems, but also the need to harness innovation to reduce drudgery and, uh, and to really draw, to, to draw young people into um, uh, rural employment. So uh, with this, I, I move to our uh, next speaker. Uh, we have Dr. Uh, Jan Edeme with us uh, who will provide us uh, with insight uh, of the African Union Commission perspective on the Food um, System Summit uh, process and the relevance of rural youth and, and employment in Africa. 
Um, uh, Dr. Janet has a background as agriculture um, uh, agricultural scientist, and uh, she's currently holding the position as head of the Rural Development Division in the African Union uh, Commission's Department of Agriculture, um, uh, Rural Development, Blue Economy, and Sustainable Development. So, uh, Dr. Janet, please, the, the screen is yours. Thank you very much, uh, Federica, and uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening from wherever you're joining us for this very important exchange of uh, discussions. Uh, but first of all, I would like to bring you greetings from Her Excellency, Ambassador Joseph Asako, uh, the Commissioner for the Department of Agricultural Rural Development, Blue Economy and Sustainable Environment, who is very passionate about the issues that affect disadvantaged segment of our population, particularly the youth and women. And the issue of employment for women and particularly youth features high in her second term agenda. Thank you very much as well to the organizers for inviting the African Union Commission to also provide some remarks during this webinar, which aims to explore the key structural policy issues related to transforming Africa's rural economies and how this can result in more and better jobs for rural youth and particularly women. Uh, dear participants, Africa has the youngest population in the world, and this has been um, alluded to as well by previous speakers, with more than 600 million young people entering the labor markets. There is significant potential for employment in agriculture and agri-processing that remains untapped. This is also driven by increased demand for safe and reliable food, new market opportunities created for producers and processors by the agricultural sector. The ag sector also plays a bigger role in resolving uh, the issue of youth unemployment challenge. Now, within the context of the Agenda 2063 of the African Union and the UN 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, the African heads of state and governments um, during their 29th Ordinary Summit, which was held um, in July 2017, declared 2018 to 2027 as the African decade for technical professional and entrepreneurial training and youth employment. And our department uh, through its flagship project CADEP has taken a number of initiatives to develop programs and projects that will ensure issues of youth and women are mainstreamed in all these programs to create decent jobs for the rural areas, especially for the youth and women. The negative perception of agriculture persists among many young people and the last speaker had also alluded to this. And this definitely stems from a growing divide between their economic, social, and lifestyle aspirations and the opportunities that agriculture offers. Particularly for rural youth, their dream of a good life often lies far away from the countryside, taking into account the sparse job opportunities, very low and unpredictable remuneration and harsh working conditions. It is not surprising that rural youth rarely mention farming as a good job. So dear participants, for us to ensure that we transform Africa's rural economies to more and better jobs for rural youth and particularly young women, we need to undertake a number of actions. Furthermore, investing in young people is key for rejuvenating and improving the performance of the agri-food sector. Young people are by nature dynamic, inquisitive, and innovative. They are particularly responsive to new economic opportunities and trends and are very keen to find employment in high growth sectors. Young entrepreneurs are also more likely to hire fellow youth, thus pulling more young people out of unemployment and poverty. The African Union is encouraging governments of its member states and their financial and technical partners in cooperation with the private sector to establish programs to support the development of viable and inclusive agri-food enterprises in rural and urban areas. Innovations in farming technologies, especially in the information and communications technology sector, value addition, marketing, retailing, and logistics can offer attractive careers to young people. And in conclusion, dear participants, efforts to improve young people's access to land, capital, and skills needs acceleration and tailoring to the specific needs of young rural women and men. Value chains such as horticulture or aquaculture might also have greater youth appeal than others particularly those with short production cycles and high value additions. And so with this, uh, Federica, I want to hand over the screen back to you. And thank you very much participants for your listening and uh, we look forward to very fruitful deliberations. Thank you very much. 
Thank you very much, um, uh, Dr. Janet. And uh, really, uh, these points about taking into account youth aspirations and the perception they have uh, about agriculture is key uh, to make uh, intervention tailored uh, to their needs uh, and aspirations and make them effective. And, uh, and yes, it's really important to really harness the, the, the innovation because, uh, I mean, they have the higher propensity than the older generation to embrace uh, new ways of doing things, um, such as, I mean, innovative technologies, but also the ongoing trends with innovations, in particular um, ICTs that really offer uh, important and new opportunities in the um, agri-food uh, system related sectors. Um, with this, and uh, also to further uh, contextualize uh, the event uh, within the framework of the food uh, summit system, um, uh, we also now want to hear from uh, Christine Campo, um, and she also has a video message uh, to share with us today. Uh, she works as a senior um, advisor on uh, food systems in Care International, and she's also deputy to the chair of the United Nations uh, Food System Summit uh, Action Track 4 on Equitable um, Livelihoods. Um, so um, she will join us shortly as she's currently um, in another event. Uh, but I ask my colleague to uh, share with us the video message that she has prepared for us today. Thanks. Hello, everyone. I hope the next time we meet, it can be in person. Let me begin by thanking the FAO for the fantastic role they have played throughout the UN Food System Summit. They have a been a great partner to Karen and to myself as we've charted the path for Action Track 4. In our group, we're looking at solutions that do three things that can help eliminate inequality, inequity, and poverty across food systems. First, it's about building agency of the most vulnerable people across food systems. Second, it's about changing power relationships in food systems, both in formal and non-formal spheres. And finally, it's about transforming structures that embed social norms and practices that systemically pri privilege some groups over others. Game-changing ideas are shaping the course of the entire summit, and they've all come directly from public consultations and direct submissions from everyday people like yourself, making this a truly people summit. We are constantly receiving submissions of innovative solutions to drive our work forward towards equitable livelihoods for all. Just yesterday, our action track, Action Track 4, received a proposition with the goal of strengthening partnerships for accelerating action for better and more jobs for you, for all of you in the agri-food systems. As you can imagine, a lot of work and discussion have gone on over the past few months across all the action tracks, from member states and governments to private sector to INGOs to small-scale food producers, fisher folks, women, laborers, indigenous tribal groups, among others. But this group is the group that I'm most excited to talk to and even more eager to listen to. It is because your voices, your ideas, your aspirations and your innovations mean that you will have the most critical role to play in making sure that our food system is more just, equitable and sustainable. First, let me talk to you about your role as entrepreneurs. The production of food is probably one of the oldest types of small businesses in history. And today, whether you're buying seeds to sow or, milk, or developing a digital platform for microfinance aimed at small producers, you're an entrepreneur. In fact, the food system is driven by millions of entrepreneurs, innovators, and game changers just like you. And that's why your voice and your insights both today and throughout the summit and beyond are important in making a real impact. There's also your role as innovators in the financial space, which is equally important. Lack of finance for small producers and the communities where they live is the most, is one of the most entrenched systemic barriers to equity and quality in our food systems. Millions of small producers, especially women, remain outside of these formal systems. But like any entrepreneur, being part of a formal financial system, having access to capital, being able to take out loans and invest in your business, all that means the difference between success and failure. And that again is why your voice is so important. You understand the needs and challenges of small and medium-sized enterprises. You know how to innovate, ideate, and adapt. 
You know how to use new platforms to overcome barriers to access and how to engage across networks, circumventing old ones and having a direct impact. Finally, it's your role as young people. I heard a great quote once that said, a society grows great when people that plant trees in the shade that they will never sit. Changing our food system is a generational challenge. Some of us may never sit in the shade of the trees that we plant today. And that means that young people like yourself will be taking forward much of the work that we do or much of the thoughts that we plant in the summit like this to build a more just and equitable future. So thanks again very much for inviting me to be with you today. I'm really looking forward to learning from all of you. We have an excellent slate of speakers and great session, breakout sessions ahead of us. So again, thank you and back to you. So thanks to you, Christine, and uh, we will hear uh, more from you um, at the closing of this event. But for now, uh, I really like to thank her for this inspiring intervention. Uh, and we have been hearing uh, many times about these game changing uh, solutions and prepositions. So I want now to move and uh, listen and give the floors to um, uh, the two organizations that uh, will present uh, the two prepositions that were selected for follow-ups under the Food System Summit. Um, so we will start with, uh, with the pitch for uh, the first one, title empowering youth as uh, innovators and change makers for sustainable food system that was submitted by FAO. And uh, today we have um, Ileana um, Grandelis and Francesca Della Valle from FAO with, with us, who will introduce and bring us through uh, the main aspects of these uh, prepositions. Ileana is a program officer on um, uh, decent rural employment in the inclusive rural transformation and gender equality division at FAO. And she coordinates one of FAO global programs on uh, youth employment. Um, uh, and we also have uh, Francesca um, uh, Dalla Valle, uh, who works uh, for has a rural youth employment officers um, in, the, in the same FAO division. And she supports youth specific and youth employment activities from both policy and operational angles at the very different levels. So Ileana, Francesca, the screen is yours. Thank you very much. And I will directly dive in into presenting the first uh, uh, solution, which is about, as you said, empowering youth as innovators and change makers for sustainable food systems. Um, okay. okay, I'm trying to move. Okay, uh, so what in brief is this solution about? The solution is really about building the agency of use. So agency is really the key word here um, for the use, not only to be productively engaged in the food system. So in terms as, as agripreneurs, as we just heard as workers, but also to drive change uh, in food systems development in order for them to participate in um, the governance and policy mechanisms that can drive that change. And this we believe is gonna be key uh, for many outcomes, not only uh, um, around the competitiveness of the sector, but also to address the major underemployment challenges of our times. Um, there are four key block uh, key blocks of outputs, key four outputs under uh, this solution. Uh, the first is about the demand side, so making agri food systems attractive to the use. And this, we really believe, demands make opp making opportunities more use friendly, more remunerative, remunerative as well. Um, this is about use sensitive structural transformation, and the intergenerational transfer of the resources that we have heard about today. At FAO, for instance, we're looking into a use sensitive food value chain assessment in order to identify with the other value chain stakeholders those opportunities that can be really tailored to the use. But this also demand boosting productive wage employment and entrepreneurship. Employment is going to be a key driver of um, youth engagement in the food system. And this, as we have heard today from the, our Malawi um, youth representative, really demands an additional investment in terms of windows, funds, um, additional resources dedicated and targeted to the youth as target group. 
Uh, then we're talking of uh, in strengthening rural youth capacities, in particular for innovation, greener practices, and digital transformation. And finally, going to the agency really um, uh, center of this solution, empowering rural youth champions as role models and support youth-led organizations and networks. Why is this game changing? We do believe this is game changing because it's really actionable. There is an exceptional momentum. Also the COVID situation, um, the COVID challenge has even emphasized the, um, the dramat dramatic underrepresentations uh, and, and challenges of youth on many fronts, but also has strong impact potential at scale and uh, is about empowering an agency of a critical demographic group. So we believe it is strongly sustainable. Um, and finally, this is a solution because we think there is enough evidence that this could work. There is strong evidence of youth commitment. Youth organizations, networks, individual agripreneurs are showing their commitment and interest in um, engaging in the agri-system when those remunerative conditions are in place. But also evidence of effectiveness of um, initiatives led by youth champions and peer support initiatives. And there are many examples. In the picture, you can see an organization of Uganda, uh, Ugandan youth champions, Yopchan, um, and these pilots were youth champions who were supported to train other youth and to support them to engage in agriculture as a business, as demonstrated critical positive effects with not only uh, job growth of the entrepreneurs themselves, but important job creation effects for other youth. And 90% of the new jobs created were for other youth. So a very interesting youth to youth job creation effect but also evidence of youth innovation, greening, entrepreneurship potential. I will just mention one recent example. You can Google the Green Agribusiness Fund is a recent initiative led by a youth-led uh, business, GR Farms, and they're setting up this fund to, for equity investments from youth to youth in Africa. Again, a really inspired um, youth-led innovation. And finally, to conclude, would you believe there is evidence of food system job creation potential, not only in the productive segment, but in all the nodes of the value chain. So a lot of work to do, but a lot of potential. And I leave the floor to my colleague Francesca for a uh, closing slide. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Eliana, for the explanation of the solution. So in conclusion, FAO proposed this solution coming from the strong internal commitment that the organization has in terms of youth. While the FAO has always worked uh, to integrate youth aspects in food systems for many years, in the past couple of years, uh, there has been uh, further internal uh, strength and commitments uh, uh, that were initiated. A few examples, uh, in 2019, FAO launched uh, its Youth Committee, which is an internal platform for uh, FAO's uh, young workforce uh, to propose new, uh, new ideas uh, within the organization. Another example could be the World Food Forum, uh, which was officially launched uh, uh, this year, aimed at being an independent global network of partners created for and led by youth uh, to spark uh, a movement uh, to transform uh, agri-food systems. And lastly, among other initiatives, of course, uh, our Rural Youth Action Plan, which was developed at the request of the Committee of Agriculture, endorsed by member states, uh, uh, at the end of 2019 and started its implementation uh, uh, last year and was developed jointly with various UN partners, which are also present today, and youth organizations. So um, jointly working all together has evident benefits. At the global level, uh, FAO is part of different processes and networks uh, which have uh, youth at the center of their activities like the ECOSOC Youth Forum, organized uh, uh, once a year, where uh, youth representatives are collectively asked to discuss important issues for them and provide uh, recommendations uh, to higher levels, so the high-level political forum. Then uh, there's also the Decent Jobs for Youth Global Initiative, uh, which is led uh, by the ILO, aimed uh, at scaling up actions uh, and impact on youth employment uh, in support of the 2030 Agenda. And uh, within this, uh, FAO jointly leads uh, with uh, the ILO, one of the thematic areas, uh, specifically the one on youth in the rural economy. And lastly, the Interagency Network on Youth Development, which works to advance and increase the effectiveness of UN's work in youth development. So, 
further to a brief mapping of the various solutions proposed that we have seen, we have assessed uh, that very few solutions uh, have actually used as main actors. Uh, while very few of the others uh, mentioned young people, uh, which is very surprising. Um, therefore, uh, given the benefits and pros of uh, jointly working together, we would like to conclude this presentation uh, in uh, uh, proposing a potential joint coalition of actors for this solution that can be uh, discussed further in the following breakout groups. And with this, uh, I thank you all also on behalf of uh, Ileana for your attention. Federica, back to you. Thank you very much, uh, Francesca and Ileana, for presenting us the main dimensions of this uh, preposition, but also to uh, bring us through the main initiative that FAO has, also partnering not, also, not only with other uh, partners, but also directly with young people. Um, so thank you very much. And uh, I now move to the second um, uh, game-changing propositions um, uh, that we have. Uh, and the idea is to form a coalition, again, for youth in African agriculture, and that was submitted by um, uh, Nourishing Africa. And this second proposition will be presented by uh, Ramat Ein uh, Fundowo, sorry, for uh, misspelling your surname. And she's the co-founder and the co-chief executive officer of Nourishing Africa, uh, which is a growing network of agripreneurs across Africa with the aim to drive the profitable and the sustainable growth of the African agriculture by empowering and connecting over 1 million young African agri-food entrepreneurs. So uh, Ramat, the screen is yours. Thank you so much, Federica. I hope you can all hear me. Yes. I won't uh, bother with the introductions, uh, given that you've introduced me already. So I'll just, you know, uh, So um, also as well, uh, a lot of speakers already on this platform. Unfortunately, you know, the opportunities and the challenges Can you, Frederica, can you hear me? Yeah, you are breaking. So maybe you can uh, turn off your video. So just maybe we can try and hear you better. Okay, I'll do that now. Uh, let me know if it is better. It's can better. you hear yeah. me? Yes, go ahead, please, thanks. All right, thank you so much. So I said I wouldn't bother with the introduction since you've already introduced me. And you know, as well, other speakers, uh, uh, earlier speakers have also alluded to the emerging opportunities and the challenges for youth engagement, development, capacity building and coordination in the sector. Um, but you know, um, just to provide um, the context as to why we're proposing a youth coalition again for African agriculture, uh, for youth in African agriculture, it all boils down to how we have so much young scholars, entrepreneurs, and professionals um, that are developing unconventional ideas that are transforming the ag landscape and how so I've emerged in the landscape that are already empowering and connecting these youth uh, actors to various critical supports. And the challenges, we all know about them, how this um, interventions are really micro and small, how fragmented they are in the landscape such that, for example, investors find it difficult to find them um, because it increases the transaction cost and risk for these investors. Also, we all know how hard it is. The keynote address speaker had already alluded to this point as well as to how hard it is for young people to actually you know, raise funding, connect with opportunities, market resources, and all of that to scale their interventions. And so, a game-changing idea is a coalition for use in African agriculture that will be a centralized Pan-African youth body that will identify and leverage the youth-led and youth-serving networks and partnerships. So we want to leverage the power of convention of some already existing youth networks and partnerships to attract, equip, and coordinate youth action in agriculture, amplify their efforts, and generate investment for growth. And the key, we, we, we have sectioned this into you know, who are the major actors for this coalition. 
what are the activities that would happen. And of course, there are particular and specific SDG focus um, that this coalition would address. In terms of the who are the actors, uh, we have identified four major key players in the youth and agriculture space. The first being the agri food SMEs, the young professionals in agriculture, the young people who are in agriculture, education and training, and of course, the rural youth who oftentimes have often been neglected in the um, youth and agriculture space. In terms of what are the key activities? So for the agri-food SMEs, the youth coalition would serve to increase the capacity of the SME networks to accelerate the growth of the SMEs through various activities, including training, mentoring, project implementation, and networking. For the young professionals in agriculture, it is really important that we build a network of people in agriculture who are launching and implementing successful careers in the sector. And by empowering professional networks across the continent, it is actually possible to build a workforce, a pipeline of talent for the sector. Also for young people in agriculture, education and training, um, speakers already have mentioned on this platform that we have seen that not too many young people are keen to launch careers in the agriculture sector. But through the coalition, by reaching across the continent and leveraging the power of networks, it is possible to actually strengthen students' agriculture associations and related ecosystem uh, interventions to incentivize the young people coming into the sector. Also as well, uh, through extension workers, it is also possible to ensure that the rural youth, uh, the capacity of the rural youth are built to ensure the transfer of technology, innovation in fields and other practices to smallholder out, um, households. This is just a snapshot of you know, the existing initiatives and networks and associations already in the landscape. With an initial mapping, we've seen that from the East Africa to North to Central, Southern Africa and West Africa, there are already these networks. So imagine the power of convening all of these networks under an umbrella, under a coalition that helps them to amplify the effort for stakeholders to find them and for these networks to actually attract more youth actors. So in terms of the The first impact that we're seeing is an interest of various youth efforts and an integrated portfolio of investment is reduced and they are able to find this use easily to invest in them. Also, by engaging youth actors, we already know that increased innovation and adoption actually the driver of a sustainable talent pipeline and workforce for the sector because of the bottom-up approach of the coalition is supporting and building capacity for all categories of use. Also, there will of course be increased production and flow of nutritious foods to low-income populations, especially in the rural households, because the coalition will have the largest connection of agribusinesses, innovation, multi-stakeholder interventions, thereby eliminating all this fragmentation and ensuring that the movement of ideas, people and flow of nutrition food is actually possible and realizable. Lastly, is the resilient livelihoods that will be built through the various SME networks and by driving multiple country actions that are replicable and scalable across multiple value chains and geographical locations. So I will stop there and um, Federica, uh, we really look and um, just to also mention in the at various you know, uh, summits and under the action track one, uh, we have been engaging various stakeholders in refining and building this idea and generating momentum. So we welcome partnerships and feedback from the various stakeholders on this call. We look forward to engaging with you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Ramat, and uh, touching about this issue of fragmentation in the ecosystem and the lack of coordination with uh, indeed one of the key challenges. 
to youth employment. And thanks to your presentation, we really had the opportunity to, uh, to know more about the key elements of your proposition and how to better synergize effort and how this has a really great potential to generate um, a visible investment uh, and impact and impact in this area. So thank you so much. We are a bit um, uh, late. Um, uh, so I now want to um, invite you uh, to uh, join the, uh, to move into the uh, breakout groups. Uh, as I was mentioning, um, uh, this is the key, the core of our uh, dialogue today. Um, you were asked to choose your um, uh, favorite topic. Uh, so you will directly, um, you will direct it to your, um, to the selected, um, breakout groups and uh, we will have um, around uh, 15 minutes uh, to to discuss and uh, and if you uh, will remind uh, on um, uh, if you will not be assigned to any uh, of the groups, we will make, um, we will ensure that you will be directed to uh, your uh, selected one. I saw that Sven, you would like to uh, intervene, the, the floor is yours. Yes, um, thank you Federica and sorry to all um, participants. Um, one point is that we are way um, over our uh, time already and um, that there were some technical issues also um, just now with the presentation um, from Rahmat um, and looking um, at the participants and that Victor also from Norwegian in Africa was supposed to um, facilitate the first group. Um, we have uh, just now decided that um, this probably doesn't make um, sense um, because the connection is so bad um, and we have moved um, the participants to groups two, three, and four. Um, so I'm really sorry um, for this inconvenience and we um, tried to take into consideration um, your, the preferences you stated, um, but I hope you understand. Thank you very much, Dan, um, for this uh, clarification. Um, so we need to deal with technologies and uh, with these um, uh, problems that might emerge. Um, uh, so just um, I ask my colleagues if we can um, open the breakout room. So we will have about uh, 15 minutes. Unfortunately, we will need to skip some of the um, points in the agenda, but we really think that these are key and important uh, for us to, to really collect and discuss with you this topic and uh, hear your voices and collect your contribution to be then um, used for uh, the game-changing proposition, but also to inform our own work, current work. So um, yeah, we will, now um, we should now uh, move into the breakout rooms. Um, I don't know if we can already open them. Okay, yes. So wel welcome all participants back uh, to the panel. Uh, I'm sure you had a very fruitful uh, discussions and this gives me the opportunity to invite now the group facilitator to briefly present the main points uh, of the discussions in the breakup um, rooms, also conclusions, proposed recommendations. And I ask you to, mm, I mean, um, keep, keep it strict to the points and uh, also invite all the participants to use the chat, uh, the chat box to add, uh, compliment, and share uh, your further uh, comments with us. Unfortunately, as I was mentioning before, we are running out of time, so we will need to skip the Q and A session. So please use and take advantage of the um, chat box that, and we will make sure to uh, to bring also the contributions there um, into the the final conclusions of this event. So I ask uh, Anna, sorry from FAO, from the, the group on uh, youth uh, capacity and skills uh, to, um, uh, to, to take the screen, Anna. Okay, uh, Federica, um, sure. Let me uh, just wrap up shortly what we have discussed. So in the breakout session on how to strengthen youth capacities and skills for inclusion and food systems transformation, we have discussed um, what works actually in rural skills development for 
sustainable food system transformation and how we can ensure that young women have access to education and training and the opportunity to use their knowledge and skills productively. And we all agreed that strong role models are very important in rural context because women will look up for this. And we have also in the end, uh, given this very limited time to discuss, uh, we have also discussed what kind of skill sets are actually necessary to shape the uh, food system transformation process. So thank you. I keep it like this and uh, I give you the floor back. Thank you very much, uh, Anna. So um, I will now move it to uh, Ji Yeun from uh, OECD, uh, who facilitated the, the working group on uh, local food systems. Uh, the, the screen is yours, Ji. Thanks, Federica. So our group was trying to unpack the opportunities and constraints for youth employment in local food system. Basically, uh, we were, you know, wondering you know, despite rapid, I mean, the fact that there's rapid urbanization and growing demand for, for food through uh, rising income in Africa, um, why is the agri-food sector not uh, becoming more dynamic or vibrant? Uh, why are we still uh, stuck in specializing in commodities trading? And so we exchanged um, on different business models, but we also did a quick poll on what are, what, each of us considered to be the main constraint to, to unblock or unleash this, this uh, industry. Um, we had a list of 10 uh, and, and open-ended uh, constraints. The top three uh, is uh, infrastructure, so market linkages, rural urban um, market linkages, access to finance and uh, the quality uh, standards. So, so food and both uh, commodities, but also processed food quality standards. Uh, we exchanged on different models, um, you know, small and large scale business models that uh, try to reconcile social and economic um, and environmental uh, objectives. And uh, we, we try to dig into what were some of the success factors. And we find that, um, I mean, summary is uh, local, the role of local government is, is, is really critical in uh, bringing out the territorial value and, uh, and, and also creating these market linkages. Um, cooperatives, so from the, from the youth perspective, they need to be uh, strong together as, as cooperatives, farmers groups. Um, technology, uh, a lot of the interventions um, from uh, so development agencies were really focused on uh, improving uh, productivity through, through um, technology to improve quantity, but also quality. And finally, uh, ensuring that within the food system, we, we um, include consumers as one of the key actors. So the consumers also have to uh, demand and understand what the value of local and uh, local pro products. Voila, from, from our uh, group. Thank you very much, Guillaume. Uh, uh, so, I mean, for sharing with us so comprehensively uh, the key results of your um, working group. So lastly, last but not least, I invite Elisenda from ILO uh, to present the key points discussed in the working group. She facilitated more and better jobs. Uh, congratulations for this very catchy uh, title. The screen is yours, Elisenda. Thanks a lot, Federica. So, well, thanks a lot to the people that joined the breakout session. So the ideas I'm sharing are theirs. Uh, I don't take credit for the brightness uh, of the discussion. So uh, some of the ideas that have been shared is the need uh, for, uh, let's say, um, need of shared propositions uh, along of principles and approaches that uh, go through uh, inclusive, inclusivity inclusion so of youth um, in systems in, in and bearing also in mind uh, life cycle uh, approaches so as youth is a moment of transition. Um, there's been a lot uh, also of discussion or uh, we had uh, some exchange on the need of integrating since the outset decent work aspects as uh, youth are developing their young uh, their let's say their startup business. Um, and also the fact that financial training is crucial. So oftentimes there is a gap in terms of financial literacy to ensure that youth can access to the instruments and, and the money that might be already uh, around. 
there are challenges with regards to uh, existing traditional or formal educational systems to meet uh, the high and increasing demand uh, for education among youth in agri-food systems. So there is a need to also think along the run, those, those. And then um, it, there has been discussion, and uh, in fact, uh, the COVID-19, and for example, now we are all meeting thanks to internet, but not everybody has uh, the same access to, uh, to uh, internet and to digital technology. So we have to ensure that digitalization processes are inclusive and they don't further deepen existing or create new, new divides. And uh, there is a need to amplify networks. So there are already networks in place and there is a need to create the connections to combat uh, fragmentation um, and to build capacity of, of, the, of the actors that the youth uh, networks and the youth actors. And, um, and then um, there are a number of actors because we discuss also the stakeholders that could be part of the solutions ahead. And uh, we discuss, of course, of youth organizations and networks, as I was saying, but also uh, value chain actors or actors along uh, agri-food systems. So how to make them dialogue and be aware of the potential of youth. And last but not least, it's important uh, to show uh, that there are youth, that there, I like it a lot, the image that can be lighthouses uh, to other youth in the system. So there are opportunities for youth in the food system. So we have uh, to show uh, the path towards that. So thanks a lot. Thank you very much, Elisenda, to you as well. And uh, I agree with uh, Nicolas in the chat that it's a very unfortunate that we don't have uh, time for the Q&A. And uh, you uh, brought in a very important dimension about good vision. Um, uh, this is a key dimension that you brought into the picture. So I um, invite uh, you all to contribute in the chat because we will make sure that your contribution um, uh, will, will be collected and inform um, the, the key conclusions of these events. Um, so thanks to all the participants of the working groups and our facilitators and note takers. Um, so I'm happy now to personally welcome uh, Christine and uh, thanks a lot for making it uh, today. Um, we now very much look forward to, to hearing directly from you uh, your feedback uh, on, the, uh, on this event as well as some potential uh, way forward and next steps uh, toward the pre-summit and beyond and how the inputs and contributions that we have been collecting uh, and hearing today can feed and add value uh, to the food system uh, summit process, given also that many action tracks as, uh, have linkages with, uh, with this topic on our rural youth employment. So how all of these can uh, be uh, consolidated. Uh, the screen is yours, uh, Christine. Yeah, thanks for that, Frederica. And as you rightly say, Youth cuts across all the action tracks. Action tracks were set up to make sure that we could do a deep dive into some of the themes. But as we've been doing our jobs as action tracks, we serve as antennas. We pick up these ideas. We serve as conveners. We bring people together to further develop ideas. We serve as critical friends to say, is that really a game changing idea? How, how can it be more transformational? And then we also connect within our own action track, but across action tracks. And as you rightly say, youth is everywhere. We heard from Action Track 1 today. I know the colleagues that I'm working with at the ILO are also talking about a coalition on youth employment. In Action Track 4, we definitely have a coalition, a very strong one forming on decent wages and income because we don't just want more jobs, we want better jobs for youth. Um, and and where, where all this is coming from. So we're very fortunate as our, our rapporteur from the session that I was in um, to be part of today's discussion, but it's only if you have an internet access, they're time consuming, means you're, you're away from your friends, your families, your loved ones and your day jobs. Um, so how do we bridge that? And I, I'm proud to say that we, it really has been a people summit, at least from where I sit. I meet regularly with the government conveners um, from the hundred, I think it's up to 40 countries um, that are hosting these national level dialogues. And I was sharing within my group, just, it's incredible. They're really bringing together, I work on equitable livelihood. So it's really important that small scale producers and fisher folks and mothers and everybody is a part of this discussion. I mean, Trinidad and Tobago was saying, yes, we, you know, our last one, we have 500 people from single mothers to everybody that 
is involved in the food system, um, whether they realize it as a consumer or as a producer or that middle person to get something to a market. So it's, it's really interesting what's been happening. Um, I'm very impressed with the Secretary General for, for the initiative to both do a global um, process, which is more what I'm a part of and, and having these types of discussions to really making sure that national and some subnational level happens as well. The last thing I was going to show because I've been asked to show how people, how you can engage in, in the food system summit. I am not directly part of this work and I'm happy to share this slide with FAO to send to all of you. But here's some of the different pillars that I know that youth are engaging, um, where they can engage. As I mentioned, they're, they're hosting some dialogues, they're heroes, they're meeting amongst themselves on a weekly basis or on a bi-weekly basis to make sure that um, that they're speaking to each other in on the issues and language that they feel is is most exciting and, and targeted to them so that's it from my side but happy to follow up with anybody who wants to know more about the food system summit or in particular to my action track uh, which i'm leading on advancing equitable livelihoods thanks for your for your time today Thank you very much, Christine, for uh, for your words. And indeed, I mean, the, the participation, the active participation is a key dimension of meaningful engagement. And really having this uh, summit uh, a participatory process is what, also in my opinion, is uh, adding value uh, to also the conclusions uh, that will be uh, taken. Uh, and uh, and I mean, we are part of these of these efforts to make participatory and inclusive and in in fact, um, we reached now the, the end of the dialogue. And uh, before giving the floor uh, to our last speaker, I really want to thank you all for uh, your time and commitment uh, toward this process and actively contributing, um, building and leveraging on uh, your uh, days to day experiences, uh, whether it is linked to uh, your global experience, uh, regional, national, and grassroots, um, which I think is really adding value of. Uh, part of, of initiative um, such as uh, this one. So I will now formally invite uh, Frank uh, Bettelman. Frank is a, a project leader of the GIZ Global Project Rural Employment uh, with a focus on youth and uh, he's also co-chairing uh, the technical working group on rural youth employment within the global donor platform on rural uh, development uh, to have the final words. Uh, so Frank, what is your main takeaways from, from the discussion and how the event can really contribute and inform the work and the future directions of also of the technical working group that you are co-chairing and uh, which are in views are um, uh, key next steps. So I thank you all, and uh, the, the screen is yours, Frank. Yeah, thank you very much, Federica, and thanks a lot to everyone who organized the event, who participated in the event. I think this is maybe the uh, most important key way that you and Food System Summit really uh, puts us together to collaborate. Uh, and I think we really can see and feel the power of collaboration and to bring different people together, different perspectives. And I think we had a, a nice mix of setting the scene, knowing why this topic is so relevant, uh, the needs of the youth as a target group, and to understand the continental policy perspective. All these elements are really key to bring them together. And I think also to discuss in the breakout groups on concrete solutions and uh, business models and um, coalitions and partnerships. So I think this is really great. And yeah, sometimes maybe it's even too much to put all this in a two hour session, no? but unfortunately this is how it is. So, but I think it was very rich. And um, maybe just from a content perspective, there is one takeaway I would like to address. Uh, and I think we have seen that also reflected in the two um, game changing solutions. So one very concretely on youth as key actors to build youth coalitions, to link them up to agribusiness, to stakeholders, to partnerships. No? I think this is really important, but on the other hand, also to uh, shape the uh, overall food system which, to be more inclusive for youth as uh, a key actor for, for agricultural development. So I think both sides are needed. They have to come together. And I think what is important also in the further um, process of the Food System Summit, if you further consolidate these kind of solution clusters and game changers that we really build out and strike out this focus on youth, not only as a cross-cutting issue, but really as a key um, line of intervention or that to build up these coalitions. And I think um, the link was already shared where you can see the different uh, solution clusters 
And there you can also subscribe and sign up for working groups to bring in further ideas. So please also use that process. Um, I think this is where the action is going to take place, where coalitions will be formed. And I think this is the way forward for the Food System Summit. So, and just the last word on our working group within the Global Donor Platform, I think also for us, our main target and mandate is collaboration, knowledge, knowledge exchange. Uh, so it's really uh, fruitful for us as well and will feed into our further work, now, both as a working group as such, but also as a global donor platform as a whole, now, which um, a stock taking report is just coming to be um, published in the upcoming weeks, which will be the basis both for further engagement of the global donor platform within the Food System Summit, probably with a kind of joint donor um, um, uh, statement uh, to, towards the Food System Summit, but also more in a midterm perspective uh, to a white paper, which we will produce to also take up um, issues of food um, systems development, but also with a strong link to our topic of youth employment. So with this, I would like to thank everyone again. I think it was really a great event and I'm very much looking forward to further collaboration. Thank you very much and have a nice one. Goodbye, y'all. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Goodbye. Bye. 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 Thanks a lot. Bye. Bye, Bye everybody. Bye.